to Judges 13. I'll give you the name of the sermon in a few minutes, Jerry. Judges 13. I was reading and studying this today, and Marie's out there pulling the weeds and getting the house ready. We're about to put the house on the market and sell it. It's too much land to take care of, and uh, I'd rather be taking the care of the land of God, <laughs> the spiritual things, because at least I got the Lord's help. The physical things wear me out, and so Marie's out there pulling weeds, and I'm in there, and I was getting some clothes out of the closets, cleaning some closets, and sat down with the Lord, and I like to use that Sunday after church to to spend my time in the Lord and praying and seeking the face of God and, and getting uh, meditating on the Lord all day and until he sends me a word or gives me a word for the hour. That's what this is, is a word for the hour. Like Sister Robin gets up there, she says, i got a word for y'all tonight. <laughs> it's a word for us. It's a word from the Lord. It's the word that he dropped into her spirit to give unto us. Same thing. The Lord drops in my spirit, man. He gives me something to drop into our lives and why so it give us strength this manna from on high guess what it started falling from on high it starts falling into our spirits it falls into us it falls into this place and guess what we get to receive that manna freely we get to feast on the word of god we get to feast on it and how sweet and how good it is uh the word is so good and it's like honey upon our lips um and the children of israel did evil again in the sight of the lord and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistines 40 years. For 40 years, he, he delivered them into the hand of the Philistines. And the reason why he did that is because they did evil again. It's just like the children of God. They just can't get enough of the world or Egypt. And they got to go out there and send some more. Got to go around that mountain, maybe 40 more years. But they, get, they, don't, they don't know when to quit. But guess what? God still loves his children. God still loves the house of Israel. And why? For his name's sake. I was preaching on it. For those that weren't here this morning, he does a lot of things for his name's sake, not for your sake. He does it for his name's sake because he is God. And he's got a purpose and a plan from the beginning to the ending. And he said he doesn't even, he puts the world in your heart on purpose. And the thing in, that's in your heart, he puts it in your heart on purpose so you won't know the beginning to the end. That's what his word said. He said, I did it on purpose. I put the world in your heart so that way you won't know the beginning to end. Because if you knew the beginning to the end, then you'd be like God, as well as being in heaven. So he didn't, he didn't allow it. That wasn't his plan his purpose. So he made sure that you're not going to figure it out. And so guess what? Anybody that tells you they got it figured out, this is exactly how the word of God is. <laughs> Tell them Cheryl said, no, uh-uh. God said he put it in your, the world in their heart, in your heart. So you won't know the beginning to the end. So you won't have it all figured out. And it's not Cheryl, it's the Bible. And I can show those scriptures to you. And uh, in second scripture it says, And there was a certain man, Azorah, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and bare not. And the angel of the Lord, I love the way he always gets these barren women. And he causes them to have some man of God that's going to become a king or, or he's going to be a prophet or he's going to be like Samuel. You know, he's going to be some great prophet. He always uses the barren women. So women that can't bear children out there that gets the CD, guess what? God's got a plan probably for you. He's about to bring a Manoah or he may be fixing to bring a Samson into your life or he might be bringing, who knows? But you might be about to bear a child that's going to be a prophet of God. So take heart, women, and hold on, because God can bring you that child in his due time. And it maybe I'm not talking about the, the physical thing as well. I may be talking about the spiritual thing. You may feel barren in your spirit, man, right now. And God's about to bear, bring you forth. He's about to show you you're not barren. You've been seeing like you're barren, and you haven't brought no spiritual thing forth. But let me tell you something. God knows exactly where you're at. He knows when you, you're you going to bring birth. He knows what he's going to put in, drop in your spirit, and he'll bring it in his due time. So hold on to the Lord. Hang on and trust God. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold now, thou art barren, and bearest not, but thou shalt conceive and bear a son. Now therefore beware. I pray thee, and drink not wine, nor strong drink, and eat not any unclean thing. So while you're serving God, please don't do any of these things. While he's dropping something in your spirit, especially if he's dropping something in your spirit, you're going to preach the gospel. <laughs> don't go back to these things. 
For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. This is his plan. He is always going to deliver you no matter what because he's not going to let the devil mock his children, mock him. Of all things, he's not going to let uh, the devil mock him. Then the woman came and told her husband and saying, A man of God came unto me, and his countenance was like the countenance of an angel of God. Very terrible. But I asked him not whence he was, neither told he me his name. I'm about to ask that man. He just told me I was going to give birth to a child. I won't believe that. But he said unto me, Behold, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine, nor strong drink, neither eat any unclean thing. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O my Lord, let the man of God which thou didst send come again unto us, and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again unto the woman as she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, You know, I thought that was a a wonderful thing because you know he didn't run over there the angel didn't come and 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 uh, uh, appear before the man he appeared before the woman <laughs> sorry man <laughs> and then you know when he also came before mary he appeared before her before he did joseph too <laughs> but you know what it's something about those women and the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him behold the man hath appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. And Manoah arose and went after his wife and came to the man and said unto him, Art thou the man that spakest unto the woman? And he said, I am. And Manoah said, Now let thy words come to pass. How shall we order the child and how shall we do unto him? And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Of all that I said unto the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that cometh of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. All that I commanded her, let her observe. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, I pray thee, let us detain thee until we shall have made ready a kid for thee. And the angel of the Lord said unto Manoah, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. And if thou wilt offer a burnt offering, Thou must offer it unto the Lord. For Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. He still did not realize that he was an angel. He thought he was probably a messenger, of the, you know, a prophet, bringing the message from God. Still not realizing at that point in time that he still was an angel that he was talking to, that he was entertaining an angel underwear. As children of God, we need to realize that there's going to be times in our life that you may not realize you may be entertaining an angel underwear. I remember going down to the streets under Dallas when we was, my kids were five, four years old. I drug them everywhere. But we, uh, and right after my husband came to the Lord, we took them down uh, town and we were feeding the homeless and we were underneath the bridges and, and we were ministering to the people down there. And, uh, and I just know that this man that came up to us, he never took a bite of the food. He never took the bread. He never soaked the bread in that soup. And I made that soup and it was good. Because I ate it myself. And <laughs> I'm not going to give anybody that I'm not going to feed myself. And so it was very good. And uh, But he didn't need it. He just carried it. And I know. And he came and he said, the Lord is going to bless you. And he was br bringing words of encouragement on us. But you know what? He never touched the soup at all. And you know, I believe to this day it was an angel that came to speak to us. And was amidst us. Because, you know, and, and maybe it wasn't. But I like to believe that. Because the way it felt and the way that it, it, it seemed to have come across, you never know when you're entertaining angels and where they're watching and they're there to see what you're up to. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when that thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a secret? So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering, offered it upon the rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously, and Manoah and his wife looked on. And I imagine there's no telling what the angel was doing. For it came to pass when the flame went up toward the heaven from off the altar. Now this, is going, this would be a mind blower for us. 
And God's lie will do anything in here, and God's lie will do any of these things. That the angel of the Lord ascended in the flame of the altar, and Manoah and his wife looked on it and fell on their faces. Now this angel ascended into the flame and upwards. <laughs> now, to be like that angel, that's the way we're going to be one day. That's the reason why this world's not going to burn you and I up when this th old place takes on fire. And we're changing in twinkling of an eye. That's the reason why. Because you are going to be like flames of fire. That's the reason why he says you like a flame of fire. That's the reason why he says he shut up in my bones. And they fell on their faces to the ground. But the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife. Then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto his wife, We shall surely die because we have seen God. <laughs> I love what Manoah. Here comes Manoah. Yep. It's not a woman this time, it's a man. <laughs> but you know what? That's okay because those women, we can do the same thing. we thinking, oh, Lord, you know what? I don't know what's happening. And Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen God. Now, he done already forgot all the things. I mean, he just got through hearing what his angel said to his wife several times. And then not only that, he saw the man go up inside that flame. He saw the angel go up inside that flame. Now we are surely going to die because we have seen God. But his wife said unto him, Now if the Lord were pleased, now she was in a right mind. I think he lost his mind when that angel went up in that flame. He done lost his mind. He's like, Lord, now what's about to take place? If the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering. Now have you ever had, me and Jerry's had conversations, I think, similar to that. <laughs> He would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hand, hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things. Nor would, as at this time, have told us such things as these. He's not going to kill us now. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Ishtel. Uh, ish to all. Now, this is the beginning of Samson's life. That was the beginning of it. The beginning. The beginning of it. The beginning was the word. The word was spoken into a ch woman of God, a barren woman of God. The word was spoken into my life when I was barren in my spirit, man. And the word was spoken long, long time ago into my life. And he said, This is going to come to pass. I may not have seen an angel, but I did hear the voice of God. I did feel his presence. I did feel the spirit of God. I did have prophecies over my life. And uh, even though I felt barren all those years, but let me tell you something, God did drop something in there. And I held on to it, and I've seen it come to pass. I've given birth several times to spiritual things that have come to pass in my life. And let me tell you something. This took place. Samson was birthed. He was spoken into this woman's life. He was spoken into her life for a reason, for a purpose. And it's because he was going to set them free from the Philistines. He's going to make sure that vengeance was going to be his. And he's going to let the enemy know, I'm still God. I don't care if my children are doing wrong. I don't care if they're out there sinning. I don't care if your brothers and your sisters and your mom or your dad or your friends or whatever they're doing, if they've known the Lord at one time and now they went back into sin and they've done evil again. But, see, I'm going to cause something to take place. I'm going to make sure that you realize that I'm still still God. This world's going to find out one day that he's still God. People are going to find out God's still God. These people that are running around in this world thinking that they can come and go as they please and that God's never coming back. He's never going to split the eastern sky like the word of God says. He's All those preachers are crazy. All those ministers of God are crazy. He's not going to come back. We're just going to go on and plan our little retirement. We're going to go ahead and plan our little parties. We're going to go ahead and plan everything everything that we have in this world we're going to lay up houses we're going to lay up treasures down here on earth that song that he was singing was something that went along with the sermon this morning 
Where your treasure is is so where your heart will be found. Let me tell you something. He don't want us to be found here with our hearts down here on earth. He says, I want you to not be barren. I want you to be fruitful. I want you to bring forth some Sansons. I want you to bring forth some Davids. I want you to bring forth some Samuels. I want you to bring forth some of these men of God, these women of God. And what am I saying? I'm saying for you to be a fruitful vine, to be a fruitful vine, because see, he will no longer want you to be fruitful on the wine of the world. He don't want you feasting on the wine of the world. He don't want you feasting on the fruits, the things of this world and their dainties. He wants you to feast on the Lord. He wants you to draw strength from him. What was she drawing strength from? Well, she wasn't drawing it from no liquor, and she sure wasn't drawing it from some of those things that the world has to offer, the good things that the world says is good for you. Really not. It really isn't. You can get it yourself in some bad habits. You can allow yourself get. Did you know shopping can become a bad habit? Puts us in debt, runs our credit cards up, causes the husband and wives to fight, pull each other's hair out. Then they come down here repenting because they told each other how much they hate each other. <laughs> There's the, that, that, now that's what some of the good things of this world does for you. But Jesus says, I don't want you to be barren. I want you to be fruitful. So here's what he wants. He wants us to draw strength from the Lord because, see, he's going to birth something into your life. Because, see, he's sick and tired of the Philistine. He's sick and tired. He's getting sick and tired of this world. You may not know it, but he's getting sick and tired of it. He sees all the homosexuals. He sees all the lesbians. He sees all the sins. He sees the adulterers. He sees the fornicators. He don't think he's blind. He's not blind. He sees it all. He sees everything that's going on. He sees the liars. He sees those that love to make a lie and, make, and, and choose to do a lie. He sees all those that love to do that sin. They commit those sins, and they love it, and they don't repent and turn from that. I'm not saying that you're not going to mess up. <laughs> Lord forbid that you go out here and say, I can't walk that straight. You know, I can't seem to line up like Sister Love seems to. Well, guess what? I might walk out there and make a mistake myself. I might go out there, and, and who knows? I might slap Jerry in the head. Now I have to go home and repent. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm really not. He wouldn't allow me to. I'm just paraphrasing. You know, I'm trying to give an example. Because I, what I'm trying to say, I'm not perfect either. But you know what? I'm going to do all that is in me to strive to enter in that straight and narrow way. I'm not going to purposely go out there and set forth to lift my hand or my voice against a brother or sister in Christ or go out there and trap my eyes on some man or some woman and start lusting after them and then just keep falling into that. And now I'm not going to be barren because I'm too busy uh, looking on the things of this world, eating their good, and, and, and the Lord told her not to touch those things, not to touch the unclean thing, not to come near the unclean thing. Also told him not to drink of the spirit, not to drink the wine of the world, not to drink of any of those things, not to drink anything that was like that. And why? Because see, he wanting to birth something into your life. And he can't birth it as long as you're feasting on the things of this world, as long as you're wanting to take their dainties, as long as you're wanting to get drunk on the wine of the world, as long as you're wanting to keep going on that direction. Let me tell you something. He's telling us as children of God, I'm wanting to birth into you. You are bearing right now but I want to give you a Samson I want to give you somebody that was going to bring forth the word of God I want this next generation to be on fire for me I want it to be a consuming flame and when the angel of God he appears into our lives through what through the flint burning bush what burning bush am I talking about I'm talking about the Holy Ghost that's in you and I tonight the one that was here tonight the one that causes me to dance the one that causes me to shout the one that causes me to preach the gospel tells us that we as children of God we have got to realize that we will stay barren he's not as long as we are wanting the things of the world wanting to get drunk on the things of the world wanting the unclean thing that he is not going to birth you will stay barren in your spirit I hate to tell you this but that's true you'll stay barren You'll stay barren. But see, when you obey God, and then when he sent that angel, guess what she started doing? You think she was immediately pregnant right there and then? It might have been 10, 15, 20 years down the line before Samson came forward. 
Because, you know, it might have been that long before all that took place. But she did. She gave birth to a man of God. She gave birth to Samson, a man that was going to be strong, a man that couldn't cut his hair, a man that was told had different things that he was going to have to do, and he was going to take up for the children of God, and he was going to slay many, many, many demons. What am I talking about? The adversary. I tell you what, the devil don't like you and I. He don't like Sister Love because see, Sister Love wants to pray, Sister Love wants to shout, Sister Love wants to dance, Sister Love wants to stay around the altars too long. Why can't she get in there in thirty minutes and get out of that place? Then, then, then I know that no demons are being put to flight. I tell you what, the devil don't like me. I don't like the devil and he don't want me to send the adversaries on the flight. But let me tell you something. Oh, Samson. Oh, I love it. Samson got his jawbone. He took the jawbone and he went out there to fight those Philistines. Let me tell you something. He went after them and he started slaying them because see, he, they were mocking him. They went over to his wife and they, they were trying to find out his riddle and everything else and then instead of going to doing the right thing. They decide they're going to go against him. But let me tell you something. God put some strength in that guy. He put some strength in him. He's put some strength in us. He's causing us to be strengthened by his mighty power. He's causing us to have our hair long. I'm not talking about the physical hair. I'm talking about the spiritual hair. I'm talking about the, ma the, the things of the Lord. I'm talking about your strength. A hair that you can't imagine. A hair that runs down this room. It goes out there and it reaches out to people and they hang on to it like Rampunzel. What was her name? Rampunzel and they grab a hold of that and they put get pulled in here. What am I saying? It's strength that causes you to get down here. It's strength that causes us to come down to the altar and we seek the face of God and we get up and we shout for God because see Rampunzel that hair grew as she threw it down over the side and when she did it's kind of like Robin. Robin throw your hair over the side there. There you go. See, she could throw it over the side almost. And she could throw that hair down. Let me tell you something. You throw that hair over. You throw that strength over. She had strength in her hair. And what happened? Her Prince Charming got on that hair. And she pulled him up and she got her rescue. Let me tell you something. You and I play a part of this. There are some people out there lost. And the adversary is out there to destroy them. And he don't want you letting down your hair. He don't want you to. He wants you to shave it off. He wants you to lose all your strength. He don't want you to have that beautiful, gorgeous hair. I'm not talking about the physical hair. Don't worry, Jerry. You're beautiful to me, bald and all. Because, see, I'm not talking about the hair that's the physical hair. I'm talking about some spiritual stuff tonight. Because, see, we can't go back and Samson get Samson here. He's not going to walk down here with all his muscles and all. And go out there and fight the adversary. Because, see, it's not done with flesh and blood. It's not done with the, the flesh. It's done in the spiritual realm. It's done in a way that the world don't even imagine, can't even imagine or even conceive in their mind what's going on in this place tonight. But let me tell you something. There are some brothers out there being touched by the power of God. There are some angels about to come into their lives. There's about to be some angels that are going to come and walk into their lives and say, Hey. I want you to be barren. I want you to bring fruit. I've got something I want you to do. I want you to get away from the unclean thing. I want you to get away from the wine. I want you to get away from the liquor of this world. I want you to come back to me because, see, I'm about to drop something in your spirit. See, did you know you don't have to be a woman to bear children? You can be a man. You can be a, a man to bear children with this way. You'll bear something. Let me tell you what. You'll find yourself birthing something. You'll find yourself uh, saging birthing something. And the Lord's dropped something in your spirit. And I don't know how long it's going to be. It might be five years. It might be a year. It might be nine months from now. And you'll bring forth something God's dropped in your spirit. And you'll be bearing something there. And God's going to show you what he's going to do with it. And he's going to show you because, see, it's not about you. It's not about I. It's not about any of us. And Lord, I preached on I am. Who is he, Jesus? Jesus, there's only one I am. There's no other eyes. I like the way my daddy preached. No little U's and little eyes in this place. Big eyes or whatever it was. It's just I am that's in the house tonight. And his name is Jesus. He is it. And so here we got, oh, Samson. 
Oh, he's got the jawbone, and he's whooping and slaying. He's getting tired, though. He got himself in a dry place. Man, he wore himself out. He's been putting the adversary on the run. He's been destroying them. And he says, oh, Lord, I'm failing with my strength. <sighs> I've been praying. I've been seeking your face. I've been calling on your name. I've been fighting the enemy. I've been in this battle for a good while, and I've slayed a thousand, but I need strength. I'm about to die. And the Lord says, okay, now that you're calling on my name, you see that jawbone you got there? I'm going to carve out the hollow of it. Now you start drinking. Oh, he puts more water into me. He puts some water in my life. And I don't know what's going on tonight, but I can tell you something. This water I saw down here must have something to do with that jawbone. <laughs> it must have something to do with that jawbone that I'm about to get into. That water started running out of that jawbone. And guess what? Out of the jawbone that he was slaying the enemy with, all of a sudden the jawbone, he starts drinking water out of that jawbone. What am I talking about? I'm talking about some heavenly water tonight. I'm talking about some spiritual water. There wasn't no fountain there. There, there wasn't no water for him to go over there, stick the jawbone in it, and break it up, and then swallow it. No, it was like Moses when he hit that rock, and that water come out of that rock. Same thing in your life, my life. He sees exactly what you've been going. He sees the war. He sees the fight. He sees the adversary. He knows how many you put to flight, but he also knows when you need some more water. He knows that jaw that you've got. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you. You see what you've been fighting the enemy with? You see what you've been fighting the enemy with prayer, with the word of God, with all that's going on? Let me tell you something. Turn around now. Drink from it. Drink from it. Rest in it. Now get your strength. I just come into the house of God. I come down here to shout and dance before the Lord because I get my strength. I draw joy from that. I draw strength from shouting before the Lord. I draw peace from uh, giving them over to the God. I draw peace and, and, and tranquility, if you want to call it that. In other words, it gives me peace of mind when the enemy it gets me down. And he, I've been wearing them out so much. He, he's just putting up a fight. And I've been beating him up so much, that jawbone. Because, see, he's mad. He don't want me to, to have the strength. Because, see, guess what's about to happen? About to come back. <laughs> and then I'm going to set those foxes' tails on fire. And then I'm going to let it burn down all their places. And then I'm going to tell you what, not only that, I'm going to take back and then I'm going to rule. That's what happened. <laughs> exactly what took place. I'll tell you what, Samson might not have been able to, but God opened the way. And so each and I play a part of this part where God says the angel appeared to, the mo to, to Samson's mother. And then he gave Samson the strength. Then he opened up doors where the Philistines were destroyed. And then he also caused where the Israel came back and they were able to take rule. I thought that was wonderful because Jesus had a plan from the beginning to the end to destroy those Philistines when he was standing in there and he was blind and he had those pillars on both sides and he had the strength of God after his hair grew back after Delilah shaved it all off and they got a hold of Samson and they put him in prison after they put his eyes out and he thought, oh, it's over with now. Got my eyes put out and I'm sitting over here in prison. Now how am I going to do your calling now, God? <laughs> I was able to destroy the lion. But see, here's the thing about it. Samson knew that where his strength came from was from that hair. It came from the things that God said was sacred. It came from those things that the Lord said is belongs to him. Samson belonged to God. His hair belonged to God. Everything that you have belongs to God. Everything that I own belongs to God. And it's sacred before him. Guess what? I better not do anything with anything that belongs to the Lord. I better give it all to him. But when I start letting Delilah mess with the things that belong to God, guess what? The enemy's going to come in and take it. And not only that, it might blind me for a little while. It might put me in prison. But guess what? God's going to shake me. The hair is going to start growing back. I'm start going to get start getting my strength back. And all of a sudden, the enemy is going to be destroyed. And the plan of God is going to be perfected. And I, this little boy is going to take me. And he's going to put me in the place where I'm supposed to be in the first place. And then I'm going to get myself between the pillars. And I'm going to start pushing on both sides. And those walls are going to start coming down.